Thank you for joining me on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Total Synthesis episode, we'll take a look at the syntheses of quinine and quinidine by the Chen Group. This is a special episode made with the help of Professor Chen and goes deeper into a theme we've touched on before, which is local desymmetrization. Without further delay, let's get right to it. Quinine and quinidine are well known as members of the Sincona alkaloid family of natural products. In addition to their anti-malarial and anti-arrhythmic activity, they are also conspicuous for their appearance as popular targets of total synthesis. What makes the approach in this episode unique, however, is an idea that becomes possible when we recognize the stereochemical relationship between quinine and the enantiomer of quinidine. Specifically, we can see that in quinine, the methoxyquinoline ring is anti to the vinyl group, whereas in int-quinidine, the methoxyquinoline ring is sin to the vinyl group. Now, if we try to imagine a route that could lead to both of these targets, we can envision that having a locally symmetric precursor bearing diastereotopic groups might allow various local desymmetrization processes by diastereoselectively removing one of the groups marked in red. So this is the key idea of the synthesis. To place this approach in context, I want to quickly touch on an idea we talked about before, which is the categorization of local desymmetrization events. In what we'll call category 1, a simple group selection, the diastereotopic group discrimination results in the formation of a single stereocenter by altering the identity of one of the diastereotopic groups, which we've marked with the red balls. In the category 2 local desymmetrization, the diastereotopic group selection is accompanied by addition to an unsaturated functional group, which can result in setting more stereocenters than in category 1. In category 3, the diastereotopic group discrimination is accompanied by conversion of a chirotopic non-stereogenic center to a stereocenter. In the Chin group's approach to quinine and quinidine, it's this third category that most closely describes what's going on. We can see that, if we look at their approach again, and we identify the chirotopic non-stereogenic center, marked in orange, which is being converted into a stereocenter, marked in green, during the local desymmetrization. Mapping that key idea onto our categorization scheme from the last slide, we can see how the methoxyquinoline bearing appendage can be considered as our X substituent. With that, we'll take a look at their route. Starting from this bicyclic diene, they used the cyanohydrin of acetone in combination with triphenylphosphine and DEAD to perform a Mitsunobu reaction and install the cyano group. Then, Lemieux Johnson type oxidation allowed alkene cleavage on the right side to give this dialdehyde. Now, they use sodium cyanoborohydride and paramethoxybenzylamine to carry out a double reductive amination and form this new bicyclic system bearing a seven membered ring. The amine protecting group was then changed from PMB to BOC by treatment with triphosgene and triethylamine, followed by bicarbonate and BOC2O. Now, in order to introduce the methoxyquinoline fragment, they hydrolyze the nitrile to the carboxylic acid and carried out an EDC coupling to form the Weiner Bamid. Then, lithiation of a methoxyquinoline pronucleophile allowed acyl substitution on the Weiner Bamid to form the ketone product. Sodium borohydride was then used to form the racemic secondary alcohol which could be resolved by treatment with camphanic chloride, forming a separable diastereomeric mixture. Hydrolysis of the desired diastereomer then led to the target enantio-enriched secondary alcohol. Now, the authors sought to take advantage of the local symmetry present in the bicycle by performing a local desymmetrization. The key point to recognize here is that we have a chirotopic non-stereogenic center marked in orange, and two diastereotopic carbons, one on each side of the alkene. The idea is that by cyclizing the secondary alcohol selectively onto one of the diastereotopic carbons, it's possible to set the stereochemistry of the carbon marked with the green circle in the product. To execute this idea in practice, the authors treated with osmium tetroxide and sodium periodate, which resulted in the formation of this lactol, which could be oxidized to the corresponding lactone using desmartin periodinane. At this point, it's worth pointing out that the substituents on this ring system can both sit in equatorial positions, which would not have been possible if the local desymmetrization had occurred in the opposite way. If the secondary alcohol had cyclized onto the other aldehyde, we would have to place one of the substituents in an axial position. Moving on, the authors used the pendant aldehyde, which contains a carbon that was formerly one of the diastereotopic carbons in the internal alkene, to form a terminal alkene using a Julia Kaczynski olefination. At this point, the lactone could be reduced all the way down using lithium aluminum hydride, resulting in this diol. The primary alcohol was then protected as the TBS ether, and the secondary alcohol was activated as the mesolate. To close the quinucleidine ring, they removed the Bach group with TFA and treated with bicarbonate and acetonitrile with heating to get the cyclization to occur. A sworn oxidation was used to convert the primary alcohol to the aldehyde, and then a rhodium catalyzed deformulation was used to excise the aldehyde and arrive at deoxyquinine. 
Interestingly, at higher temperatures, the authors found that it's possible to form deoxyquinidine as a side product, which they propose is formed through a dehydroamination hydroamination pathway. Finally, deoxyquinine is a known precursor for quinine through an oxygenation protocol that was reported by Stork. Moving on to see how quinidine can be made using similar ideas, let's go back to the secondary alcohol, which was an anti enriched by the camphanic ester resolution. In this route, they started by mesylating the secondary alcohol, then, using osmium tetroxide and sodium periodate, followed by Julia Kaczynski conditions, they converted the internal alkene in the starting material into this product bearing two terminal alkenes, going through this dialdehyde intermediate. Now they were able to use the same reaction as before to remove the Bach group and close the quinuclidine bicycle. Then, stereoselective oxygenation with potassium terbutoxide and oxygen led to this product, where the authors once again aimed to use a local desymmetrization to remove one of the diastereotopic vinyl groups. In this case, they wanted to use the secondary alcohol to cyclize onto one of the diastereotopic vinyl groups, not only to render the vinyl groups chemically differentiated, but also to set the stereochemistry of the prostereogenic center marked in orange. They were ultimately able to reduce this idea to practice by executing an iodocyclization with aniodocyclinamide, followed by dihydroxylation of the alkene on top, and treatment with terbutyl lithium to regenerate the terminal alkene on bottom, which proceeded through the intermediate bearing a dial on the top face and a terminal iodide on the bottom face of the quinuclidine. Finally, periodate cleavage of the 1,2 dial on the top side of the bicycle resulted in formation of the aldehyde, which could once again be subjected to rhodium-catalyzed deformulation to arrive at quinidine. And that'll wrap it up for today. I thought these synthetic approaches to quinine and quinidine were very innovative applications of local desymmetrization, and I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. Thank you for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, please support us by liking and subscribing, and feel free to send us any questions and comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time!